Hello, welcome back to another shaving video. This is today's soap that we're using. I believe it's called Mole um, Grooming. This is my first time using this. It's a tangerine scent. And I bought it from this company, West Coast Shaving. So if you want to know the ingredients, you could go to the website and uh, check it out. And one thing I like about West Coast Shaving is if it's a new product, sometimes they do a free shipping. And when this one came out, they did a free shipping. And I've always wanted a tangerine soap. So I was like, ah, oh, I better grab it. So I grabbed it. <laughs> uh, I always wanted a holy black, so is it tangerine? Oh, but I, I just, the price of it kills me. Plus you gotta buy the aftershave. And the deal is I don't use their aftershave, so. But when I saw this, I was like, baby, I gotta grab it. <laughs> well, welcome back to another shaving though. Um, I just feel scattered brain today. I don't know why. Okay, let's start and try to get some soap out so we can get this baby lathered and get her shave on. So, how's everybody done? Hopefully everybody's staying home. Unlike here, a lot of people are running all over the place gallivanting. Sorry if I get quiet. Throw some stuff in the bowl. Oh, I love the scent. Ugh. When I got it and I opened up the box, first thing I did is crack this baby open and smelled it. Here. Let me put this so you can eyeball that. Why? I get my, um, what I do is I sit there and I push my soap onto the bottom, kind of like get it nice and flat. I should be still in the frame. But yeah, I try to get it as thin as I can. You can barely you could see it because of um, it's like a light cream color and my cool cereal bowl is all nice and white. This is the brush I'm using. Um, I need to look this up, but I got this off at Etsy, and there's a guy who uh, who um, turns these, and I like this acrylic because it's nice and lightweight. So anyway, okay. This is partially corona thing, partially not. You know how um, the coronavirus is going on and everybody's supposed to be in quarantine, you know, chilling at home, relaxing. I got a question for you. How many of y'all will stare out your window all day long? And I'm going to say more than likely nobody, except for the rare few. Yeah, I had a package stolen off my porch. I'm bent. I'm probably going to vent about it. I'm thinking about making a video on it. But I don't know. It just might aggravate me. But if anything, I'd probably post it. But if I do, you'll see it. And you'll see how irritated and frustrated I am. And if anybody could tell me, I still do not understand um, when these, um, I was going to say, those YouTubers, and oh, I'm posting this on YouTube, so I guess I'm on too? I don't know. But anyway, um, I watched this guy. Uh, his name is Chris. you probably seen his channel. It's called uh, IMCDB. And um, I've been watching him for a few years now. I watched him. I watched Buster. I watched... What's his name? Joe. And there was another guy. I can't think of his name right now, but he was cool. He used to always, um, oh, he's a little Italian dude. Oh, what was his name? Uh, I watched him because he, uh, he grew his facial hair pretty quickly. 
And then he used to do like handlebars, he did mustaches, he did goatees, he did all kinds of facial fur sculpting stuff. It was kind of neat. I liked watching him because he's like, today I'm doing this. And he'd like trim it up and do some cool wonders or sometimes he'll grow it out. And then it, it, it I, I really liked that guy. Um, I don't know if he still makes videos, but I haven't seen any new videos for him pop up on my, um, on my to watch bar. So I haven't really seen, watched him for, oh, it's been almost, almost a year now. Yeah, I, I probably lather differently than a lot of y'all. Y'all probably are like, oh, you're lathering way too long. You're taking too much time. Hey, I am leg shaving. It takes time. I got acres to cover. And y'all people shave three different ways. I only shave one way because uh, I'm lazy like that. And <laughs> I've always done it that way. And it's kind of hard to teach this old dog a new trick. But I kind of like how the shaving community is growing now. There's a lot more um, channels out there. Uh, there's a... Uh, oh, what was his name? He he just started watching my channel. Um, he does head shaving. I like him. He's cool because, you know, he has the beard. He shows you how he trims his beard and everything. I go to my boyfriend. I'm like, hey, grow it out and do that. And he's like, no. I go, hey, look at this guy. He does um, like a handlebar. What do you think about that? No. I go, hey, how about no? I'm like, you're no fun. <laughs> okay. Oh, you probably can't see my laser. West Coast shaving. I like this matte finish. It's just, it's, I just love it. And the razor I'm going to be using is the Gillette 7 o'clock. Oops, sorry y'all, I hit that. You're probably like, whoa, what was that? Yeah, I just knocked the camera stand. I don't know. I'm kind of happy, but I'm kind of sad, so you know how that rolls. I'm happy to be doing the shaving and talking with y'all and seeing how y'all are doing. Hopefully you guys are all doing fine, staying home. Throw this in the bucket. Get the whole leg out. Chris from CD, I am CDB or whatever. He says this soap, it's, it leaves a really good residual. So I am not doing a pre-shave. I'm going to try this bad boy out. Throwing some water on it. Watering up the whole leg. Y'all probably are like, have you seen people shave legs before? Basically, this is just a shave and talk video. It ain't nothing real too fancy. Not a how-to video. None of that fancy stuff. I'm not that fancy. And I'm not a very good teacher myself. Okay, I tried one time. Um, at the time, my friend, um, she had a air, not an Airbnb. She had a bed and breakfast in Idaho. Um, he has up in the hills of Pocatello. Anyway, um, she was way back there in the hills, and she had her little cabin, and it was, um, it was cute. She made it 100% by herself. Well, not 100, 100%, but she had to, like, have Chris come in, um, pour her foundation, and she was on the side of a hill, and he used to always scare me. He used to always feel like I was going to go flipping and sliding down the hill, because when you come in on your truck, because I drive a standard, well, I used to, not no more. But, um, it used to feel like you were going to, like, fly off the hill when you were going to her house because you come down a downhill steep and then you turn and then her house has a little flat pad. But when you're coming down the hill, it's a drop off if you didn't turn. It was like, whoa. Was like, oh, man. But anyway, I, I taught this class because she asked me if I would teach a class. And I'm like, um, okay, yeah, sure. So... I was like, what could I teach these people? Uh, she says that wanted, she wanted something to be native. And I was like, well, everybody teaches dream catchers. And I don't know. I wanted a little something more intricate because they are adult women. So they should know how to 
use their hands and fingers very well and they should take direction very good. So what I chose to do was to teach them how to do uh, little medicine pouches, probably about that big. And I cut it at a buckskin. Okay, for all those people out there, I know y'all are shaving people, and you're probably like, okay, what's buckskin? Well, exactly what the name of it. It's a buck, so it comes from a deer, an animal. Skin is the hide. And what natives do is after they go hunting, they skin their animal, and they um, take the hide, they soak it, they remove all the hair off of it, so it's just the um, raw hide. Some people will call it, but anyway. You take that, you put brains on it, you work it in, and you keep working it until your hide is dry. Basically, oh, long time ago, that's how they used to tend their hides without chemicals like they do nowadays. So, and after that, um, they would take it and they would put, you know, like when you're at a campfire, all that smoke. They have this little thing that they make, kind of like a comb, but they put a little... Um, the hide around kind of the little thing and create a smoke kind of like if you ever smoked like fish and stuff it's kind of a smoker type thing like that well anyway the whole deal is you have the smoke and the smoke goes and attaches to the hide that makes it that brown color that's why if you look at buckskin the buckskin is brown okay the more you know <laughs> anyway, I took the hide, I cut it up into the little pouch sizes, and all they had to do was add some beads and stitch it up. And it was a simple stitch. I had, um, I think it was like 13 women I was trying to teach. Anyway, my mom had to help me out because um, I'm good at explaining things, but not to like a group. And then showing something small and intricate to a group on how to do something is kind of hard. So, thank God my mom was there. She helped me. But we taught them. And what I thought was very interesting is um, the uh, different ethnicities learned and did it differently. The one way that was funny was this French lady. She got mad and she threw it because she couldn't get it. And then... Um, like oh no no don't don't give up don't give up you could do it and she's like I'm here on vacation I am not here to be working <laughs> I was like oh sorry man but uh, is a Japanese gal oh my god she picked it up so quickly and it was perfect it was like way better than mine too she was like precise and perfect okay I'm right now just rinsing off that soap. Yeah, still has some pretty good slickness to it. So, that was my teaching experience. It was very interesting. But I learned a kind of a lot that day. Number one, I'm not a very good teacher to groups more than four. Because I did teach a little class of three little girls. Or was it for? Anyway, there is for their Girl Scout troop so they could earn a juror making badge. And we made little bracelets. And that was fun. Okay, on to the left leg. And of course, again, you know the routine. We are shaving down to here. So are you guys probably excited and anxious to get out of the house, huh? I only get out of the house maybe once, maybe twice a week. Before this coronavirus ever hit, um, I'd only go out on Fridays and Saturdays. So when they said quarantine, stay at home, I really didn't have a problem until it hit Friday. And then I'm like, I want out of the house. I want to go buy my coffee. <laughs> yeah, that's my little sick pleasure is I go buy a coffee Friday or Saturday, but we always go and get one coffee a week. And that's our time to get a house, take a cruise around town, 
town is a, a town called Butte, B-U-T-T-E, and it's very aggravating when people, they see it and they're like, but, you live in but, no, I don't live in but, I live in Butte. <laughs> There's goods and bads to this town. But I met a lot of nice people here. Because I'm more of a social butterfly person and my boyfriend, he is not. He don't like no change. He likes things as is. He's very... I don't know. I say it. He calls himself boring. He said it, not me. But yeah, when I go out, I like socialize with my, um, when I used to go gamble before everything was closed down, I have friends with, because there are certain places would go, because the uh, atmosphere was better. Some of the places are kind of shady, and plus some of them are really dark. I mean, it's so dark, you know, where I have a, I don't know if you knew, I don't think I told you guys, but anyway. I got glaucoma really bad in my right eye and my left eye has a little spot on the upper part and glaucoma um, for those who probably don't know what it is it's basically the little receptors in your eyes that read the vision and send it to the brain those things die so slowly and basically it blocks out your vision so you'll get like these little like black spots but it usually starts from the outside and goes inward so but when that vision is gone it is gone there's no retrieving it and believe you me I've asked my doctor like if somebody got in an accident and if they happen to die could you transplant their eyeball he says well, yes they can but the deal is they cannot they could hook the whole eyeball up and everything, and it will survive. But the problem is that the little receptors, they can't get them to connect properly, so there will be no vision. So you'll still have the eyeball, but with no vision, you cannot, your brain will not receive the receptors. So, because I had a couple of people, they're like, if anything happens, you could take my eyeball. I'm like, yeah, but it won't work. But thanks for the offer. And what got me on the topic of that? <laughs> oh, I'm just talking and talking and I'm happy to be talking because, you know, you can only talk to your partner so much. And with my partner, I cannot talk, shaving talk with him. It's like... It's like him talking car talk to me. Okay, number one, I'm going blind. And number two, I can't drive no more. So to have that fun feeling of getting in a car and just leaving and having pure freedom. Sorry, I knocked that camera again. Um, that's gone. So I can't do all that stuff like how I used to. So car talk to me is like, okay. And... So, he has himself a little Chevelle that he's trying to work on. It's a 69 Malibu. Yeah. His co-worker, because uh, he's like, well, if I'm going to move, I might have to sell my car. And his co-worker's like, oh, what is it? He's like, oh, what's a Chevelle Malibu 69? His co-worker's like, yeah, I'll give you $500 for that. I go, you freaking for reals? He's like, yep. I go, does he not know what the price of cars are going now nowadays, especially the older ones? And I go, must have been the last time he bought a car. You know how long? That was like back in the 90s when I've seen cars that cheap and that were older. But come on. 69 back then. It wasn't very old like it is now. Now they're considered classics and the price of everything. Dude, I was on, he goes Craigslist. And we're looking at him. And, woo, that price is ridiculous. 
Now, that was a good shave. I liked it. Went smoothly. Got all the slickiness off. And of course, we're going to be using good old fashioned Goban Diabetic. And I don't know if y'all know this, but I, I tell you guys every video that your body does suck up what you put on it. So kind of be mindful, like I'm a diabetic, so my diabetic lady told me, is this lotion that's good for you? So, so I use it, throw it on my feet, they're a little dry. But yeah, a good shave, good for another week. If not, maybe two. <laughs> As you know, I don't always post every week. Sometimes the growth just don't grow. Now, I wish they had kind of YouTube back when I was younger. Because when I was younger, my hair, I could shave every other day. And my hair would be like a week's growth like it is now. Because I'm getting older. It's slowing down. When you get older, a lot of stuff change. So, another shave down. What you think? Fab. All right. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And share this. I'd really appreciate it. And if you have any tips for me, or if there's any fancy soaps that you're like, you need to try, it's a must. Put it down in the comments down below. I'm willing to try anything. Alright, until next time. See you later.